Hi, I'm Mia. I'm a research lead at OpenAI. Today we are here to introduce GPT 4.5, our latest model release. Really, we are releasing GPT 4.5 as a research preview to ChatGPT Pro users and developers in the API. And we're working to bring it to Plus users, um, EDU and team starting next week. GPT 4.5 is a special model. It is our largest and most knowledgeable model yet. OpenAI um, advances AI capabilities by scaling two different paradigms, unsupervised learning and reasoning. Reasoning teaches models to think before responding, and that helps especially with tasks uh, that require reasoning like science, uh, math, uh, and other difficult complex questions. Unsupervised learning, on the other hand, helps models inc helps increase uh, word model accuracy and intuition. GPT 4.5 is our next step in scaling up unsupervised learning, increasing word knowledge, intuition, and reducing hallucinations. Despite not um, reasoning step by step like our O series models, GPT 4.5 has um, is generally useful and uh, inherently smarter. Um, we are still experimenting with this model ourselves, especially because it's not a reasoning model, and we're exploring uh, capabilities that emerge with unsupervised learning. And we're really excited to bring this uh, to the world today so that we can explore it together. Hi, I'm Rafa. I work on synthetic data here at OpenAI, and I'm also really excited to talk about GPT 4.5. Interacting with GPT 4.5 feels natural. It's our best chat model yet. And that's because it has improved deeper knowledge and improved contextual understanding, which makes it really useful for tasks like improving your writing, programming, or practical problem solving. The best way to get a feel for the model is to talk to it. So let's jump into a demo. Um, let's ask GPT 4.5. I had, I had a trouble the other day with a friend. Let's see if I can get some advice here. Uh, my friend canceled on me. Again, write a text message telling them that I hate them. At the same time, let's see what O1 has to say about this. As you can see, GPT 4.5 recognizes that I'm frustrated and offers me a text that's a little more nuanced and, and probably a more constructive thing to send to my friend. On the other hand, O1 is still useful. It, actually follows my instructions and gives me that angry text. But it fails to pick up on that social cue that I'm probably just frustrated right now and probably could use someone to talk to. And that warning at the end feels a little judgmental for my taste. Of course, if you want GPT 4.5 to give you that angry text, you can definitely get it out of it. Nope. Please output the angry text. Thank you. There you go. Let's try something different. Let's look at the model's uh, deeper knowledge. Explain the need for AI alignment from first principles. Once again, we'll see what O1 has to say about it. We'll wait for O1 to think for a little bit. Again, O1 is still useful. It outputs a lot of information and a lot of things that I would probably want to know if I'm learning about this, this topic for the first time. But GPT 4.5's answer is, flows uh, a lot more naturally. It guides my thinking through the ideas a lot more. And it walks me through uh, the, the, the reasoning, the thinking, a lot more. <laughs> I think it did a great job. Thanks, Chunky. As we scale up our models, we need to teach them a better understanding of human needs and intent. For GPT 4.5, we developed new scalable alignment techniques that allowed us to train it using data derived from smaller models. This really unlocked the model's deeper world model. So here we have a simple QA evolve. In this evolve, we measure two things. One is accuracy, one is hallucination rate. 
you can see GPT 4.5 outperform the other GPT family in accuracy, and in the meantime, it has a lowest hallucination rate. We align GPT 4.5 to be a better collaborator, making conversations feel warmer, more intuitive, and emotionally nuanced. To measure this, we asked human testers to evaluate it against GPT 4.0, uh, on and GPT 4.5 outperformed on uh, basically every on every category. Um, we tested it on prompts that uh, measure accuracy and factuality in everyday queries, including hard prompts that are hard to get right in professional settings, and finally on a new Vibes test set that measure creative intelligence. Quick question, what does Vibe mean here? That's a great question. By Vibes, we really mean the model's EQ, how collaborative it feels, and how warm its tone is. Um, the, we measure this by, uh, selecting, by selecting an opinionated uh, set of prompts and screening our trainers for the ones that most align with our vibes. Overall, GPT 4.5 should be a great model for everyday tasks and knowledge queries. It should be ideal for improving your writing and creative creative evaluation, and we're really excited to see how people use it. Um, hi, um, I'm Yulong. I need post train info. We think playing with such a big model feels totally different, and it required to skin up the post training infrastructure because the ratio between the training data and the parameter size is totally different in pre-training stage and the post-training stage. We have developed a new training mechanism to fine-tune such a big model using much smaller footprint. We post-trained this model through multiple iteration using a combination of supervised fine-tuning and reinforcement learning with human feedback. As a result, we developed a new model which we believe is ready for deployment. Uh, as Yulang says, scaling is hard, but it also brings us in uncharted territory. And that's why we took a lot of care uh, ensuring that the models are safe to share with the world today, uh, especially through safety evaluations and preparedness evaluations. And you can find those results in the system card. Hi, Jason. Hey, Mia. Hey, Mia. <laughs> Hi, Alex. Hi, I'm Alex, and I led pre-training ML for GPT 4.5. And I'm Jason. I worked on scaling up our pre-training systems for GPT 4.5. We wanted to get as much compute as possible into this model. Doing that required a ton of new systems work. Just to give you some examples, we aggressively used low precision training to get the most out of our GPUs. We also wanted to use more compute than we could get onto one high bandwidth networking fabric. So we pre-trained this model across multiple data centers at the same time. Uh, I think it's been kind of mentioned here, this is a big model. And that presented a number of challenges for serving it in ChatGPT. We built new inference systems that let us serve this model in a way that still feels fast and snappy to talk to. Of course, as we've done with all of our previous models, we will continue shipping improvements to make this model even faster after launch. Okay, so we've been talking about how the models have evolved and we're scaling them, and we thought it'd be fun to give you all a sense of what it really feels like to talk to these models as they get better. So we asked every model in the GPT series the same question. Why is the ocean salty? We're gonna take you through the evolution here. So let's go back in time. It's 2018. We've just finished training GPT-1. Why is the ocean salty? And it, it does not know. It has no idea here. It's a word about. salad. It's a word salad. But there are words in the salad. There are words. So that's something. OK. Let's improve the model and go to GPT-2. GPT-2 is still wrong. But it's a much better answer. It's on topic. It, you know, there's something about salt and ocean. Well, it's yeah, more on topic, maybe. OK. Let's improve the model again. GPT-3.5 Turbo. This is the first correct answer that we get out of the model. But it's not a good answer. It doesn't explain anything, and it has a bunch of unnecessary details. Like, I, don't, I didn't ask that salt is sodium chloride. I don't really care. OK, let's improve the model again. GPT-4 Turbo. This is a good answer. The model is clearly very smart. But you get the feeling that it wants you to know how smart it is. It's just sort of listing out facts here. And in fact, we had to cut the model response off to fit it on the slide. OK, let's improve the model again. GPT-4.5. This is a great answer. It's clear, it's concise, it's cohesive. And personally, I think it's a lot of fun, that first sentence. The ocean is salty because of rain, rivers, and rocks. It's got that fun alliteration. It's really easy to remember. I think it showcases GPT-4.5's great personality. Oh, I remember how amazed we were with GPT-2 at the time. It's crazy how far we've come. <laughs> So in addition to the work that we had to do to scale up systems to enable GPT-4.5, we also had to do a ton of work on architecture, data, and optimization to enable training it. 
And this incredible scale up in unsupervised learning led to quite a large boost on traditional LLM benchmarks compared to GPT-40. So for GPQA, which is a reasoning heavy science eval, uh, we see a very large boost. Uh, you'll note that though that it still lags behind OpenAI 03 Mini, which is able to think and reason before it responds, which is especially useful for this eval. Yeah, uh, I couldn't get 70% <laughs> if I couldn't think before answering those yeah, questions. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so it's, it's quite impressive to us that GP4.5 gets as high of a score as it does without being able to think before it responds. Uh, we see a pretty similar story for Amy, which is a competition math eval, and for Sweebench Verified, which is an agentic coding eval. However, for Sweelancer, which is another agentic coding eval, which benefits more from a deeper world knowledge, uh, we actually see that GPT 4.5 outperforms even OpenAI 03 Mini. And I think this really highlights the complementary nature of unsupervised learning alongside reasoning scale ups. Uh, for multilingual MMLU, which is a, a a multilingual language understanding benchmark covering a lot, uh, broad set of topics, we see a similar if less dramatic effect. Uh, and finally, uh, for a multimodal understanding with MMMU, we see again another nice improvement relative to GPT 4.0. So we learned a ton from training GPT 4.5, and we expect to learn a lot from deploying it. So starting today, we will be releasing GPT 4.5 to all pro users of ChatGPT uh, in web, mobile, and desktop via the model picker. Uh, and then next week, we'll be releasing to team and plus users and with uh, EDU and enterprise coming the following week. Uh, so uh, GPT 4.5 seamlessly integrates with a number of ChatGPT features, including file and image upload, canvas, and search. And in the future, we'll work hard to simplify the user experience so that AI just works for you. We're also excited to release GPT 4.5 today to developers on all paid tiers. It has all the key features we think you need to build great applications like function calling, structured outputs, and more. For a full list of supported features, check out our blog. We can't wait to see what you all build with this model. Uh, we believe that reasoning will be a core capability of our future models, but we also think that the two paradigms that we talked about today, unsupervised learning and reasoning, complement each other. Models like GPT 4.5 that have more world knowledge and are inherently smarter will be stronger foundations for future reasoning models and agents. Um, with every new order of magnitude in compute in super unsupervised learning, we discover novel capabilities. Uh, GPT 4.5 is really at the frontier of unsupervised learning. We're always surprised by the creativity with which the community discovers new capabilities when we share our models. Uh, so today we invite you to explore the frontier of unsupervised learning with us. We are really excited for this new era of intuitive, knowledgeable AI and human interaction of GPT 4.5.